Welcome back to History Class with Dr. W and our continuing discussion of the year 1968. We've arrived at our final lecture of the course. We've been talking about the music of 1968, one of its most memorable aspects, and as we conclude our study of that year, I'll mention just a few more themes of the music of 1968. First, I should reiterate the powerful connection between music and the hippie movement. Psychedelic rock, central to the hippie experience, seemed to fuel the effects of hallucinogenic drug use. It could be loud, with heavy guitar distortion, or it could be eerie and hip and trippy, sometimes including string music, as that popular in India. Or it could be throbbing and repetitive, pounding out beats for many minutes on end, as some of the popular songs from The Grateful Dead or The Doors. San Francisco was central to the evolution of the psychedelic sound, and concert promoter Bill Graham was an important figure on that scene, using his auditorium, the Fillmore, as a venue for promoting the many bands playing the San Francisco sound, including The Grateful Dead, Jefferson Airplane, and Big Brother and the Holding Company. Big Brother is better known for lead singer and female icon Janis Joplin. The band got a huge boost after their memorable performance at Monterey Pop in 1967, and they built on that fame to release one of the biggest albums of 1968, Cheap Thrills. The album's raw sound and Joplin's raspy and powerful vocals captured the power of their live performances, and the album included a 10-minute live version of the song Ball and Chain. The biggest hit from the album was Peace of My Heart. It's also known and coveted for its memorable cover art, and the album is among the most sought after for collectors of vinyl, even now. Released in October of 68, it soon hit number one on the album charts, which it held for eight weeks. By the end of that run, Cheap Thrills had become the best-selling album of 1968. Another noteworthy musical event was the opening of the Broadway musical Hair, which opened on April 29th. The musical stands as a monument of that era and the year, with nearly naked hippies handing out flowers in the aisles, and cast members at times briefly appearing nude on stage. The intention was to shock the audiences, which it did. One review wrote, Frequent approving references are made to the expanding benefits of drugs. Homosexuality is not frowned upon. The American flag is not desecrated, but it is used in a manner that not everyone would call respectful. Christian ritual also comes in for a bad time. The authors approve enthusiastically of miscegenation, and one enterprising lyric catalogs somewhat arcane sexual practices more familiar to the pages of the Kama Sutra than the New York Times. So there, you have been warned. Oh yes, they also hand out flowers. The musical was a smash hit in the United States, though it was banned in some other countries. The songs were snappy, upbeat, and positive. The soundtrack spawned three top ten hits that year, including Age of Aquarius, Let the Sun Shine In. Another development of that year was the advent of hard rock, or acid rock. One of the most popular bands of the year was Steppenwolf, one of the standard bearers for heavy metal music at that time. Steppenwolf released two albums in 1968, which included some of the most recognizable songs of the year, Born to be Wild and Magic Carpet Ride. Another artist in this realm was the British supergroup Cream, which included guitarist Eric Clapton, along with Jack Bruce and Ginger Baker. The band achieved huge hit songs with a blend of blues, pop, and psychedelic rock. Clapton, ironically nicknamed Slowhand for his exquisite guitar skills, is regarded as one of the greatest guitarists of all time. While the band broke up near the end of 1968, they also released one of the biggest albums of the year, Wheels of Fire, which followed their huge 1967 release, Disraeli Gears. That album included Sunshine of Your Love, one of their biggest hits and a mainstay on radios in 1968. Wheels of Fire included an array of hits as well, 
including the instantly recognizable White Room. I've already mentioned another of the noteworthy guitar stars in this genre, Jimi Hendrix, another of those regarded as one of the great guitarists ever. Hendrix achieved newfound stardom after his appearance at Monterey Pop, and followed up that performance with his best-selling album ever in 1968, Electric Ladyland. The album included many classic licks, but the best known is All Along the Watchtower. The following year, Hendrix was one of the headliners and delivered one of the most memorable performances at Woodstock. He died tragically from a drug-related episode in 1970. Finally, I should mention the popularity and prominence of folk and acoustic music, which included some of the biggest hits of 1968. One of the best-remembered albums of the year was Music from the Big Pink by Bob Dylan's former backup band, known as The Band. The Big Pink was the nickname for the band's basement studio, and the music shows a strong influence of Dylan. Rather than moving in the direction of harder guitar rock, the band opted to go with more acoustic sound, rooted in vocal harmonies. The music blended country, folk, R&B, and soul, and led to positive reviews. While the album was not a huge hit at that time, it is now regarded as one of the landmark releases of the year, and the song The Weight has had a lasting legacy, in part because it was featured in the cult favorite film Easy Rider. Achieving far greater commercial success was Simon and Garfunkel, one of the best duos in rock history. As I mentioned earlier, they had two smash hit albums in 1968. The first, the soundtrack for The Graduate, with the two memorable songs, Mrs. Robinson and Scarborough Fair, which are both played numerous times during the film itself. The other album, released in April, was called Bookends. It included a re-release of Mrs. Robinson and several other hit songs, including Save the Life of My Child and America. The pitch-perfect and haunting harmonies of Paul Simon and Art Garfunkel were enormously popular across all demographics, with their simple sounds having particular appeal with hippies and those who were attempting to reject the massive commercialization and corporatism rife in America. Perhaps the most haunting song is the title track, Bookends, a simple and sweet acoustic number of less than a minute. I encourage you to listen to it as we conclude this course. The simple and powerful lyrics stand in some ways as a fitting metaphor as we remember 1968 itself. Time it was, and what a time it was, it was. A time of innocence, a time of confidences. Long ago it must be, I have a photograph. Preserve your memories, they're all that's left you. I can think of no better way to conclude our course on 1968.